you're watching the Hearthstone Battlegrounds EMEA Cup. Welcome back. You are just in time for the second half of the lobbies and Saddle. Last time I was casting, we ended with RDU and Havu Gabu winning the second lobby, first and second. Then it happened two more times, and I just got to know, how much are they paying Bob? It's got to be the <laughs> biggest tip in history. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I've seen RDU stream a lot. Like, he tips Bob a lot. I've seen him end so many turns with gold still in his tray, and that the only reason you do that would be to tip Bob, right? So that has to be what it is. <laughs> and of course, we got to continue the story, and once again, we watch RDU. I want to say there's no necessarily super strong heroes here, but I'm still a fan of Nosdormu. Yeah, I think Nosdormu is good enough just to take here, not bother with the uh, re-roll on Finley. I think the amount of times you pick Finley has gone down a little bit because you used to be able to have very high standards, right? It's like, oh, there's no rag on my Ev here. Then fine, I'm just going to take Finley and try and get rag on my Ev, right? Or Jandis or whatever it is. Um, but since the nerfs have come in and kind of equalized the hero pool quite a lot, I think your standards of what you'll take over Finley are a little bit lower. And I think Nosdormu is absolutely fine. And what a great first combat we have because it is the dream team facing off against each other right mm -hmm. away. Habu Gabu on the Mayev. What do you think about using hero power versus just buying this turn? Whoa. Demon. <laughs> I see. I see. I mean, I see. that was two layers of questions. First, I was going to ask, are you going to buy at Don't all? And if you are going to buy, really is it going to be the Wrath Weaver or the Vulgar? And he goes for the big scaling potential. Yeah, so this is kind of smart, right? I think my initial answer to your question was that I was going to roll and find something to hero power there that was a bit more valuable. But one of the things that really shuts down early Wrath Weaver scaling is the fact that you're weak for the first f uh, one or two fights, right? So you end up taking kind of five to six damage early, and then that's all currency that you're not able to transition into stats because you need all of your health to be playing demons. Since he knows he's... Uh, tying the first fight against his partner in RDU. He had the opportunity here to kind of go for some big scaling with the Wrathweaver instead, but he did just let the shop go and hope to be uh, hitting further demons in his next shop, and uh, did not find it here. Yeah, that's super interesting to me because I'm of the opinion that if you do take the pink man, then you're automatically freezing a demon if you can get it. And the Vulgar does mean that you stack additional damage, but maybe the thought for Habu Gabu is that because he's playing Maev and gets to buy another minion this turn instead of leveling, then he can look for a demon that doesn't deal two to him? Yes. Excuse me, Jay. I think you'll find, by the way, his name is Jesse. Okay, like, we are on first name terms here. I did not even know that, but I guess I can call Sir Salty by his name and Radu just Radu. No, 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 it's the, the pink man. He's Jesse. Jesse Pinkman. Uh, yeah, okay. I am really, really slow. I have seen Breaking Bad, so I'm very, very <laughs> upset at myself for not getting that immediately. It's fine. I mean, the fact that I had to explain the joke makes it that much better, right? That's how jokes work, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. That just means I'm the one of the joke in this case. But what is Radu? <laughs> Seriously, what is he tipping Bob? So many Murloc tokens, another triple, and he can possibly greed this to get, uh, what are you thinking, four drop or five drop? It's a great question. RDU might be even be thinking six with the kind of mood that he's in right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's absolutely huge. He can just greed this out here. He has double triples lined up. Both of these players have ended up uh, griefing Rafam to an extent on uh, Sir, for Sir Salty. Although, you know, this is just right. two uh, Tidehunters left on the board. So, uh, you know, Sir Salty's going to get a nice minion here from uh, RDU. But obviously, as you were mentioning, his partner, Habu Gabu, chose to play nothing in order to hand nothing over to the uh, Rafam on Sir Salty. While we were discussing my lack of understanding on cultural references, we did have that turn where Habu Gabu didn't play anything, as you mentioned, yep. just to deny Sir Salty the steal with Rafam, especially since Elemental is a premium one to get. And because Radu has the freedom with the um, double triples, it feels like he could be going for a four drop into a five drop and just skipping for the three drop. It does very much look that way, yeah. And I, I do like this idea of like griefing particular opponents because it's actually a little bit more valuable you know you you see you know people in like twitch chat or whatever talking about it on people's streams like oh shouldn't you like not play minions so you don't feed drag like you're feeding refarm here and generally like in a, a one-off lobby you don't worry that much about griefing particular heroes because it's just that one lobby right and then you move on you'd rather focus on yourself <laughs> winning but in this where it's kind of this league system where you're playing against the same people over and over again and there might be key people that you want to deny from picking up points uh griefing particular opponents on particular heroes might actually be something that has a bit more merit 
Especially when you're consecutively fighting two people of the same team, and that means that the uh, Rafam player in particular, if they spend two gold and don't get anything for it, that makes them fall super far behind, right. which is um, they rely on having strong early game in the first place to be able to go for that curve and then make up for it later with a slower level. But we do get to see RDU most likely going for his first big drop here. Yeah, this is a pretty crucial decision here, because pirates are in the lobby, so RDU has the opportunity to uh, even fish for gold grubbers here, which would be insane. I was wondering if he might kind of split the difference. Uh, we, I actually talked about this play yesterday with Collins, I believe, where you can play one, see if you hit the gold grubber, uh, gold grubber, and then if you do, play the second to look for the second gold grubber, and otherwise hold on to it for a tier 5 minion instead. Yeah, that definitely makes sense, but it could be that RDU is just thinking if he doesn't play for the second 4-drop, he's just far too weak on mm. board. Um, now, by playing both of them, he is extremely strong for 7 gold, and he's lined up against the bottom player in terms of health total in typical Hanzo at the moment, which is extremely difficult. Reno, you definitely want to wait until you can get one of those direction-defining minions before you use the hero power. Yo, but when Reno has very little health to work with, Sometimes you can see him just settle for hero powering even... I don't, I don't want to say this party elemental, but the amount of damage he's going to get is insane. The amount of damage he's going to take right now is going to be ins insane, especially with that attack. And that goes left as oh, well! Oh no! That's the he's disaster! Alive. The disaster scenario for Hanzo. 17 damage and with a not particularly impressive looking board, he is going to have to hit something nutty this turn. I just want to know what's going through the minds of these players that face RDU lobby after lobby and yep. see that he has that type of board on 7, 8, 9 gold. And I don't want to say it, but this could be the fabled Reno dying without having used his hero power. It's very much looking like it. That's two Zerus as well. Like, Zerus is a minion ah. that you love to pick up as Reno because it, of course, has that opportunity to just double the high roll potential because you can golden the minion immediately that you get off it. But with as weak as uh, typical Hanzo was there, he couldn't afford to wait one turn to find something powerful to do. He just had to go immediately. That's a great and speaking what of somebody who is here? also going hard here, Habu Gabu is going for two triples Hello? in a single turn. It's double genies. Are you aware you're on 15? Like, this is such I, a greedy play. I know. I was going to say, this is not the strongest board state at the moment. Maybe he was hoping to hedge after taking one genie. He would take more of a tempo five drop. Um, no mechs, but if they were in the lobby, I would suggest taking something like Sneeds just to stay alive. But if he does stay alive, depending on what drop Sneeds gives, it could be straight from 15 to first place. That is a big deal, though, with the Red Whelps. He actually managed to completely kill a minion, which is important because uh, Spawn of Nazoth is there on the board. It was actually pretty unlikely to happen. I mean, never mind. Apparently, you're just a genius, and this was the right play all along. What do I know? So scary. The Soul Juggler with the Imp Gang boss synergy could mean that Kabu Gabu is taking a lot of damage, but the snipe on the juggler! Oh my goodness! He is so in this. Yeah, and now this value trades, this kills the other Imp Gang boss, he loses to one single <laughs> token for his greed, Gia. Like, that could not have gone any better. What did I say? Straight from 15 to first place? Yeah. Okay, and he's at 11, the, but... And now the dead Reno fight on top of that as well! Oh my goodness, Habu Gabu is winning this lobby. Dear Lord, how are we even surprised, though, at this point? Mm. The Make only thing we point. have to guess is who between Habu Gabu and RDU will be first place. <laughs> so we will see Habu Gabu set up his elemental board here. After this, after that, I'd love to take a look at the Ragnaros because he is chilling on 40 health right now. Seems to have probably got all the way to his Sulfurous activation without losing a single point of health. So I'd love to see where he's at. Yeah, definitely a good point to bring up because it's not often that Rag doesn't fall behind in the early game these days. And a while ago, you were talking about how some players could be griefing the Rafam and not trying to feed uh, heroes like Ragnaros. But the opposite is also true that when you do run into your teammate, they could purposely, um, if, you, they, if they know that they're fighting Ragnaros, by token generating minions to try and activate the hero power sooner. But we do see that this is already the 9 gold turn and the hero power is still not active. 
It is not, and it does seem like the rag has stayed low level as well. I did glance over a couple of times and see him being uh, kind of one tavern below the normal curve, which is something the rag does try and do, and it seems like he missed by one activation on the previous fight as well, which is a huge deal. That's a whole plus six, plus six. Uh, he didn't end up getting by the uh, the threat of one minion, but looks like he's hit some nice early triples on those low tavern levels as well to remain very, very strong throughout the early game. Yeah, it's a different style of playing Rag, just to be as defensive as possible to get that hero power activation, but sometimes it does mean that you end up activating a little bit later. Uh, for Oliesh, though, it's not a big deal, I think, because he's still relatively healthy. The main sticking point is that he needs to find good minions to land the hero power on, because at the moment, he doesn't have any Divine Shield. That is very true. So he might have to just start uh, rolling away here, looking for some answers. It's kind of a weird setup right now because he does have that golden party elemental, but doesn't actually have any other <laughs> elementals uh, right. to, be, to be buffing up with it at the moment. So he's going to pick up the second pair here with the uh, Kobold Scalebane. But yeah, really wants to be looking for a cleave or a divine shield, something that offers additional value from the uh, massive amount of stats that he's picking up. The stasis, uh, were there were two of them in the last shop which mm. looked like an interesting option because he did have the party elemental but it's easy to get baited by that because it's not actually that i have a chance that you land um minions that even want to get the hero Yo. power on i was about to list um aside from the crackling elemental maybe wildfire as one that you want to get the buffs on but oliash says that's not good enough and here he's rewarded for rolling a little bit more by hitting a triple but he's gonna hold on and try to i assume level next turn you're doing great out yeah, there. very possibly. He also might have just felt like he didn't have enough time to make all the decisions he wanted to do in terms of what he was looking for off the triple and just, you know, kind of stalled out. And we'll see what he ends up doing next turn. But look at this, just already <laughs> starting to spiral out of control. And you can see, at this point, Habu Garbu and Adi use, use opponents. It's gone from, like, laughing and frustration to just kind of a resigned smile when they see how strong either of those players are at this point. I mean, in a way, knowing that Hello? there's one team... No, he's what? just gonna triple Gar next he's turn! He's gonna triple Hello? Gar! Yep. Again, how are we even surprised with Zotto? But uh, the point I wanted to make is, in a way, if anybody is gonna be this far in the lead, you're kind of thankful that it's the guys that are already super far ahead in first, because it's safe to say that the way this second day is playing out is it's now a race for second between these three other teams. Sorry, I just realized that was actually objectively unlucky for Habu Gabu because he didn't get to play one of his elementals. So he just straight up missed out on Nomi scaling, right? Because he, he he tripled in his hand without being able to play the second Gar. Like, that's so unlucky. Can you imagine being that unlucky, Gia? I mean, come on, Bob. Yeah. As if they don't pay you enough. <laughs> and now it's the oh! simple train of just buying every elemental. You can see elementals being great value as well with Nomi 2 for 1. Straight into a wildfire as well, just picking right. it up as a uh, huge minion. <laughs> Sorry, I would like to take a look at the Yogg perspective, just so we can see, you know, pictures seconds before disaster occurs, you know? Mm hmm Yep, that looks about right. I'm scouring this board for poisonous minions that can deal with the Golden Gar, and I'm counting... hang on, bear with me... Uh, zero! Zero poisonous minions, okay. I think this Yogg will be thankful for every last point of health among those 33 <laughs> HP that he has right now. Yep. I am not sure it'll be enough. There's just far too many tier 6 minions on the other side. It's unbelievable. <laughs> just the small matter of a 1994 to deal with. Oh, by the way, there's also six other minions outside of that. Good luck. I think the most... The, the only point of tension here is whether these genies are going to die or not. It's another guard! It's another guard here! Uh, are you kidding? Tap did... Tempest! <laughs> oh my god! When did they patch genie to, aside from going down to tier 5, it only spawns tier 5 or higher? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did not realize that was a thing. But at least for Alexis Diesel, the trades played out in the best way he could have hoped for after yep. seeing the board state, which is everything but the gar. Uh, getting cleaned up, and it means that it'll at least be a while before nice he faces the uh, oh, Abu Gabu board. <laughs> and so that means Abu Gabu's just gonna look for his next victim. How is he facing a ghost here? Hello? 
Uh, he's in the bottom three, so yeah, he's he's open to doing it. I, I guess it's, we've been on seven for a very long time, right? So the other players have probably cycled through and had their ghost fight, um, and they're still on cooldown. So, oh, what? <laughs> I, I'm, like, I'm, try, I'm trying to speak, but ridiculous things keep happening, Gia, and I just completely lose my train of thought. I don't have time to explain the one nonsense ridiculous thing that's happening to Habu Gabu before the next one appears. <laughs> this is just a spectacle. I'm predicting second Golden Gar will be coming in the near future, but yep. we do know that this is going to go incredibly in his favor. So I do want to see if anybody has a chance of actually beating this comp. Is there anybody on, uh, say, Murlocs with poison? <laughs> Murlocs with all of them poisoned already at this point in the game? That's basically okay. what you're going to need? This is kind of close. He has the Amalgadon with poison and a Burgurgle in there waiting for the toxin. And uh, this is still quite strong for this period in the game. If you just remove the outlier that is Habu Gabu and look yes. at things in a vacuum, he is in a decent spot. The Baron has synergy with that bottom is off as well. Yeah, he is objectively strong for this point in the game, just not in comparison to what we've been watching for the last few rounds. The bad <laughs> news is he's got the uh, Poisonous on his Amalgadon, but no Divine Shield, and mechs are banned, which means he yeah. cannot find the Annoyer module, which would really be the clutch pickup there to be able to compete, maybe, with some of what Habu Gabu is doing, but still looks like he is a, a long way off from our perspective. It's probably going to be one of these lobbies at this point, where second, third, and fourth is decided by who goes the longest without fighting against Habu Gabu. True, but that's such a big deal that he knocks out second place in one hit in Alexis Diesel, and it just goes to show the power of Habu Gabu when we're talking about this player who looks extremely strong, knocked out second place from 22, and the main context of our conversation is it's still not going to be enough nope. when he faces the elementals. All right. But we do see Oliash with the scam comp put, put yes. together. He's facing Sir Salty, and I'm not sure how this stacks up against uh, Sir Salty's comp in particular. But this looks like a good setup to challenge Habu Gabu later it on. It does. Yeah, this is the kind of thing he's going to need to put together. And we've seen this from a couple of players, right? And people who play a lot of Battlegrounds on ladder will be familiar with this situation as well, where sometimes if you're just completely over-contested on stats, this is the kind of thing you have to end up going for. Just Divine Shield and Small Poison as minions. Uh, we've seen it with Small Poison Murlocs in the past. We've seen it with My Exna. And now with uh, Poisonous Spore being added to the game as well, that opens up so many more possibilities to be able to go for this kind of thing. But this is the kind of build that I think is going to be needed to... Uh, to compete with Habu Gabu this game. I agree. And in the fact that one of the original minions that made it into the comp to this point yeah, is a golden me. glyph guardian, that Except can effectively be a poison if you get it to be big enough because it triples its attack. Yes. And there are very few minions that can get out of range. Uh, we do see Oliash here giving up one of the rag buffs on it because he needs the positioning just to stay alive a little bit longer. And this does look like another comp where the scamming works out pretty well against big demons. It's been such a long time since I've seen this, but um, Sir Salty also managed to get the golden selfless plus the Baron of the Lord. It seems like a month ago at this point, but remember when Habu Gabu bought a Jesse turn one and it looked like he was going to intend to, 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 to do this? I'm, I'm very pleased for his sake that he didn't. I think his current <laughs> board state is vastly superior. <laughs> Look at it! Look at it, Gia! Yeah, I'm looking. I see 36 damage. And That's probably low by Habu Gabu and Radu standards. And that is a dead Ragnaros as well, which is great oh, no. news for Habu Gabu because Oliek was one of the players who had the uh, the scam comp coming together that might just be able to compete. And we are all the way down to top three. And this time, it's a top three without RDU Gia. Looked like he went out in fourth place there as the Nogdormu and the carry is going to be fully onto Habu Gabu for this round. So many people falling off on that round, but really the big story is that Oliash and Alexis Diesel both landed in the bottom four as well, Assigned and Typical Hanzo, and those are both two teams, so it really looks like the um, race for second place is looking good for Team Orange, Izium and Sir Salty. Yeah, huge round for them because they needed it the most going into this. Uh, Sir Salty started off strong. I uh, had good results in the first two lobbies, weak results in the uh, second two lobbies. Um, whereas Izium has had fairly poor performances throughout, it's got to be said. Um, so being able here to pick it up. This is the play I was talking about, Gio! Oh, Do you remember? Is it... Toxfin yes. the Toxfin! Oh, pick up the Toxfin! Ah, oh, insane. Oh, what a waste. And he gets triple. <laughs> <laughs> and the Amalgadon, but... 
Uh, really, what we have to know here is the discipline from Sir Salty. It can feel like you've spent half the game building up these floating watchers and it feels bad to get rid of them, but he knows that there is a mammoth of a comp on the other side and he absolutely needs poison divine shields to have even a small shot of surviving here. I did say small, though. <laughs> there it is! There it is! The <laughs> second triple guard! That's actually, and he gets an Amalgadon. Like, obviously, it's fun to laugh at the high roll here, but that's actually objectively bad, seriously, for, um, for Habu Gabu at this point, right? Because the only way he can lose at this point is to poisonous minions. So for him, consolidating those two giant minions into one giant minion actually makes him weaker about against just about the one thing that he can lose to. But the fact that he picked up an Amalgadon as the other job sure. means that he can get a poison divine shield of his own if he's lucky. And we do know that Habu Gabu has been having, you know, really Bob's favor. <laughs> That's a great play. I can't wait to see this shake out. And here we go. Poison, no divine shield, but quite good still. Yeah, and most importantly as well, still plus six, plus six off that little rag, still buff scaling for the Gars. Another Amalgadon now as well. Habu Gabu <laughs> is just rolling with laughter right now. I would I would imagine he has not played too many games, even with as much Battlegrounds as he does play, uh, that were as ridiculous as this one. I completely agree. And the Nadina for good measure. That's a way to get Divine Shield on mm. your Amalgams. I do think it's close to the time where you can think about getting rid of either the Nomi or the Little Rag to get the Nadina Divine Shield synergy, or even Murloc to give yourself an additional roll on the Amalgam. Yes. It doesn't hit the poison though. Yeah, I actually really like that play. Getting the extra minion type, dropping the Amalgam, then I think he is going to end on this Nadina instead. Yeah, I, I really like the way the, the gold was allocated that turn. I think that was very smart. And let's see who Habu Gabu's next victim is going to be. Of course, Izium, the only one left. He does have a Nadina of his own. But only one poison minion. Only one poison minion, indeed. The Nadina is being given Reborn, though, which does throw multiple Divine Shields onto that Poisonous Amalgam, so it does get to do some work here. If he can value trade the 35, 36... Okay, no. If he was to pick up a value trade there, or be able to hit the 29, actually, the 29, 400 would have been an insane attack for Izu to take. Just the numbers you threw out there, <laughs> I had to laugh. 29, 400. It's a while ago, I was saying that the Glyph Guardian Golden with enough buffs is effectively a poison against most minions in the game. Yeah. Most minions in the game does not include a tripled 29400 guard. But this is actually pretty crucial because Izium is not as far away as we might have thought. With that cute little Nadina tech that he has with the reborn Nadina giving multiple divine shields back to his amalgam. Um, he was only, you know, one good attack away from actually being able to take that out if he was able to uh, take a value trade on that 400 health minion. Yeah, and honestly, on the other side from Habu Gabu, I wouldn't be surprised to see him just hoard any poisons or amalgams, even if he doesn't end up playing them, so they're mm. away from Izium's pool. Because yeah. it definitely seems like the only way that he can get a win at this point is with the help of some deadly spores! Hello! Okay... Well, one's coming in for sure. I'm not sure mm -hmm. what this Baron is achieving, so... Right. I would love There's... to be able to buy both, but at this point, eh. Doesn't really work out with the gold. Yeah, you probably buy one for now and hope that it posts uh, for long enough and then freeze for the second, I think, is what I would do here. Mm. Or is he just going to replace Caligo straight up? Wow. Going, yep, going for <laughs> okay. it right now. I, I did expect that because otherwise he could have just ended with the full seven minions on board. Yep. We're going to make this play. It's all in on the poisons <laughs> right now. Oh, wow, surviving on one health! And then gets the Divine Shield, tanks the Nadina, down goes one guard, Divine Shield does take the trade on the other side, but they're both down now. Still looks like there might just be enough stats, depending on where this goes. Hits the poisonous minion for Habu Gabu, which means his Amalgadon guaranteed to survive here. No matter what else happens, that is going to be lethal damage coming through, and Habu Gabu is going to take it down yet again. Another first place for RDU and Habu Gabu, and once again, RDU also finishing in the top four. They are absolutely free-rolling this lobby right now, Gia. 
They are monstrous indeed. But honestly, I think the big story here is that second and third are teammates as well. Izium and Sir Salty yep. on Team Orange. Because the story has been kind of the opposite, but also the parallel of yesterday, where it's been the field kind of close to each other, three teams, but one team running away. Um, yesterday, it was white team and falling far behind. Now we have the red team that are so far ahead that it's hard for anyone to catch up, but it's definitely still a race for second place. And the fact that the orange team got second and third all secured this lobby means that they put themselves in, I was going to say the best contention, but oh my gosh, it is still very close. It's insanely close, yeah. But they certainly needed it because they were starting to get cast away. If you look at what they did in the second block, uh, two sixth places and two seventh places came from the uh, orange team during our second block. So they needed to start off hot, and that's absolutely what they did with the second place and third place. Just ignore what the red team's doing. It, does, it doesn't matter at this point. Like <laughs> they're, they're, That's over. Like Forget about it. We'll see them on Sunday. Uh, the big story now is just, as Gia was saying, the fight between these bottom three teams. And I believe uh, orange came in to lobby number five uh, in last position, so they needed to pick up that big win, and they absolutely but still within uh, shooting range for the blue team to be able to get to yep. second because, again, a six-point gap means that one first place can sometimes overtake if your uh, teammate does well enough here. I want to note, though, that although we are mostly excluding the red team in terms of who's part of the tight race, the fact that they are hoarding the first places can be a very big deal if it does come down to tiebreakers towards the end of the lobbies because if two of the teams end up with the same amount of points, uh, then the player that will be ranked higher is the team that has the most first place finishes, which uh, outside of the red team, only the black team has